Hi class, uh, we've been working on torque and right hand rules and uh, a couple of days ago while I was talking with several of you during office hours, we stumbled on some confusions about the way we use the right hand rule and the way we find the angle that we use to compute the magnitudes of the torque. And so we kind of worked through that and I think we have a clear explanation of a methodology, an approach, uh, a strategy for finding those angles and computing those magnitudes each time we need them. So I just wanted to go through that with you all with a quick video while you're studying uh, to kind of help you get through it. So just as a reminder, what we've been talking about is torque, which is a vector. It depends on two other vectors, the moment arm of a system and the force that's applied that is torquing the system. And so we use the right hand rule to give us the direction, the vector direction for that torque. And then when we need to calculate the magnitude, one of the formulas we use for the magnitude is that it's the absolute value of the length of the lever arm times the absolute value of the uh, magnitude of the force times the sine of theta. And one of the things that we've been working on and sometimes struggling with is what is this angle theta and how do we make sure we have the right angle when we're trying to calculate this magnitude. So one of the things that we learned early on when we were studying vectors was that vectors are quantities that have a magnitude and a direction, but when we first started learning about them, we were adding them and subtracting them together. Uh, we learned that we could grab them and move them around arbitrarily so that we could use them together. Um, to calculate quantities related to the two vectors. And so I want to return to that idea and use it to talk about the right-hand rule and the magnitude here, okay? So let's, let's start with a system example to do with, and then we'll, we'll talk about how we're going to uh, manipulate the vectors. So let's go back to a problem we've encountered many times, which is a long uniform object, say a board or a rod, let me specify that the pivot point is going to be over here on one end. And let's imagine a mass, a rock or something, sitting on the end of the board providing a torque. Now, this mass is pushing down on this uh, board. And if it's constrained to pivot around the edge here, that means it's going to rotate in a clockwise direction in this video. Okay, so how do we get that from our torque equations? So what we do is we first draw our physical diagram, the force is acting on the object. So in this case, the force here is the normal force of the weight on the board. And then the other quantity we care about is the lever arm, and the lever arm points from the pivot point to the place where the force is being applied. Okay, so in order to get the direction, we use the right hand rule. And what we've been doing is we take our right hand, we point it along the lever arm, we turn our hand to face the, um, uh, face the force, and then I curl my hands towards the force and my thumb, in this case, points into the board. So my thumb pointing into the board gives me a torque that is into the board or a clockwise um, uh, rotation in this case. So how do we actually do this consistently every time to make sure that we don't get um, uh, the wrong answer and we know which way to construct the right hand rule? What I want to do is I want to go back to this idea that we can push the vectors around arbitrarily. And in order to construct the right hand rule and in order to construct the magnitude, uh, we want to take our two vectors that we're talking about, the um, uh, lever arm vector, that's R, and we want to take the force vector, and what I want to do is I want to shift the force vector, I want to push the force vector so that it is tail to tail with the lever arm vector. Okay, so this is this diagram, the vectors are pointing in exactly the directions that they should, but I've moved the vectors around, not because this is physically where the vectors are, but because this construction of the vectors allows me to use my right hand rule and allows me to use my calculation of the magnitude unambiguously. Okay, so if I use my right hand rule, I put my fingers along the lever arm, I turn my hand to face the uh, 
force causing the torque and I close my fingers, I curl into it, and this gives me torque into the page as expected, okay? So, when I want to compute the magnitude, the question is, what angle theta are we talking about in the problem? And in this case, this is the angle measured from the lever arm to the force. So in this case, this is this angle. Okay, and the way we've drawn it, and for the specific problem, it's a right angle, but nevertheless, it is this angle. Now, the question that comes up repeatedly is, how do I know it's that angle and not this outside angle? Okay, well, let's do that outside angle. So if I were to use the right-hand rule with that outside angle, I would put my fingers along the lever arm. I would turn my hand to face the force. That's what I've been doing, but... I'd have to turn my hand the other way, which is away from the force, and this would seem to give me a torque pointing out of the page. Okay, and so that's counterintuitive to what we think is going on there, but mathematically, why is it that I can't actually do that? Well, the answer is you can, and it lies in the fact that this is the sine of theta right here. So let's imagine we were trying to calculate the magnitude of the torque using this outside angle. Let me call it phi for the moment. In the inside angle, theta is 90 degrees, and the sine of theta is plus 1, okay? But this outside angle, phi is 270 degrees, and the sine of that angle is minus 1. So you can imagine if I tried to compute the torque with that outside angle, and I got coming out of the page, if I then multiply by minus one, that gives me into the page, which is exactly the right answer. So if you use the wrong angle, then the mathematics gives you the minus sign that forces you when you're using this in equations to push the, um, uh, push the torque in the right direction. So let's talk about this method of sliding the vectors around uh, in a couple of other cases, just to kind of illustrate how they might work. Let me draw just two examples here. Let's do an example where your board still is pinned at one end, but let's imagine a string pulling diagonally up and to the right. Okay, so in that case, my force is that tension vector that I drew there, and the lever arm points from the pivot point to where the force is applied. So using our construction here, here's my lever arm, there's R. I'm gonna slide my force vector so they are tail to tail. So here's my tension. And so the right hand rule, my fingers go along the lever arm, I turn them to face the force. When I curl, that gives me torque, which is out of the page. And indeed, that is what we expect for that tension. It's trying to lift the board, which is a right-handed rotation out of the page. Let me do another example. Uh, we often have been seeing examples where you have a board, again with our pivot point, and maybe I am pushing on the board myself from underneath it. I'm pushing diagonally and up. This is me pushing on the board like this. Okay, so the lever arm in that case points from the pivot point to where the force is applied. So there's my lever arm. And in my construction here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my lever arm. There's R. I'm going to slide my force so that they're tail to tail. So here's the force. Okay, and in this case, my right hand rule, I point along R. I curl to the F, and this also gives me a torque that's out of the page which is correct because that force of me pushing up from underneath is trying to rotate the uh, board uh, in a counterclockwise fashion. Again, in this case, this very clearly defines what the angle we mean is because I've slid these um, tail to tail. The angle is always the force from the lever arm to the force. And using my right hand, this is theta. Using my right hand, this is theta. Okay? 
So that's the kind of uh, improved description, and hopefully that will give you a little bit of more intuition, a little bit of more flexibility and tools, helping you uh, calculate both magnitudes and directions with your right-hand rule. Um, you still draw your physical diagrams exactly the way that we've drawn them before, but when you're trying to ensure you get the right angles when you're making these kinds of calculations or constructing your right-hand rules, this is a useful technique that seems to be helpful. Okay, so let me know if you have any questions, and we'll talk to you all soon.